Solemos creer que conocemos todo lo que nos rodea, pero no es cierto. Existen cosas como los bosques mortales. Cientos de cuerpos son encontrados cada año en ese lugar. Misteriosas criaturas. Casas embrujadas. ¿Crees que lo que habita esa casa es malvado? Eso es lo que intentaremos descubrir. Inexplicable. Conmigo, William Shatner. Muy buenas tardes. Estamos aquí y en History nos vestimos de gala. Porque hoy, aquí... Ahora tenemos nada más y nada menos que al ícono más grande de la ciencia ficción en la historia, del mundo del espectáculo. Actor, autor, director, voz y sumamente reconocible, pero sobre todo un ícono que hoy ya tiene 90 años y grandes éxitos. Desde Star Trek hasta T.G. Hooker, The Practice, Boston Legal y ahora lo inexplicable con History. Estoy hablando de nada más y nada menos que Mr. William Shatner. Así que hoy vamos a tener la oportunidad de conversar con él. Y muy importante, recuerde que tenemos la capacidad de tener subtítulos y traducción simultánea en portugués y en español. Y sin más, con ustedes, mi, el señor Eduardo Riz, presidente gerente general de History y de A&E Networks para toda América Latina. Muchas gracias, César, y muy buenas tardes a todos. Nuevamente, gracias por acompañarnos en otra de nuestras eh, conferencias de prensa. Hoy un día sumamente especial. Eh, estoy seguro que para todos, para mí, este, eh, lo que dijo César, no, no, no tengo mucho que agregar sobre el ícono uh, que es el señor William Shatner para todos nosotros en Latinoamérica. Ya el señor Shatner ha estado con nosotros hace unos años eh, parte de A&E Networks Latin America y, este, y esta, hoy, hoy nos juntamos para anunciar y celebrar la segunda temporada de Inexplicable eh, por History Channel. Um, de verdad que es sumamente un orgullo, Mr. Chatner. I said I was going to do it in Spanish and English for you. It's a privilege and honor to have you with us now on the History Channel Latin America. We are thrilled that this is the second season of the Unexplained and nobody better than you to, to be part of, of, of this program. So thank you for being with us. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to you, Cesar. Thank you to all our journalists from all of Latin America that are here with us, uh, as always, uh, supporting us. And you, I hope you enjoy uh, the next half hour. Thank you, Cesar. Gracias a todos los operadores y todos los amigos de prensa que están con nosotros. Y sin más, vamos a compartir con ustedes un segmento de lo que viene a ser la segunda temporada de Lo Inexplicable con William Chatner. Templos magníficos, represas monumentales y elevados chapiteles que se extienden hasta tocar el cielo. ¿Por qué construimos? ¿Ah? ¿Es solo porque necesitamos un techo sobre nuestras cabezas? ¿O hay alguna otra razón aún más profunda para crear enormes monumentos de piedra? ¿Elevadas catedrales? e imponentes rascacielos? ¿Intentamos probar algo? ¿O tal vez incluso jugar a ser Dios? Bien, es lo que intentaremos averiguar. Salford, Inglaterra, octubre 2020. Expertos que trabajan en el Centro de Investigación Acústica en la Universidad de Salford publican los resultados de un innovador estudio sobre uno de los monumentos antiguos más emblemáticos del mundo, Stonehenge. En su experimento, los científicos construyeron un modelo a un doceavo del tamaño de Stonehenge y usaron parlantes para disparar ondas sonoras a través de este y midieron la reverberación del sonido en la estructura en miniatura. Su conclusión, los enormes bloques de Stonehenge fueron diseñados para amplificar el sonido. Todos conocen Stonehenge, es el monumento megalítico más famoso en todo el mundo. Pero ¿quién lo creó? ¿Por qué lo hicieron? 
Ahora los investigadores comienzan a sugerir que una de las posibilidades es para mejorar la generación del sonido usado en los rituales. La idea de que Stonehenge fue usado para amplificar los sonidos hechos durante los rituales es intrigante, pero es solo la más reciente de una larga serie de teorías sobre esta misteriosa estructura. Luego de siglos de estudio y especulación, Stonehenge continúa inspirando tanto fascinación como un intenso debate sobre cómo y por qué fue construido. Stonehenge es el círculo de piedras más grandioso de las Islas Británicas. Es único, es distinto a cualquier otro círculo de piedras del planeta. Tiene dinteles encima, es perfectamente circular y realmente resalta como el símbolo de la antigua Bretaña. Las personas están obsesionados con él porque es el único modo en que pueden volver a tener algún contacto con sus ancestros. Stonehenge, que se cree fue construido en el año 3000 a.C., se ha erguido en las planicies de Wiltshire, Inglaterra, por al menos 5000 años, con un anillo externo de 30 piedras de 4 toneladas que rodean 5 arcos enormes, cuyos masivos bloques pesan 25 toneladas cada uno. La construcción de Stonehenge desafía la explicación. Un proyecto así no pudo lograrse fortuitamente. No se pierdan mañana, no se pierdan mañana el gran estreno en México. Sí, mañana, 19 de mayo, será el gran estreno en México a las 20.50. El sábado tenemos estrenos en Brasil, Chile y, y todos los demás países. Pero Colombia tiene el estreno el día domingo. Así que no se pierdan con lo inexplicable con William Chandler. Y ahora con ustedes, el vicepresidente de Programación, Contenido y Producción Original de History, Miguel Brailowski. Gracias, César. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos nuevamente. Uh, Mr. Shatner, it's an honor for us to have you in uh, History Channel Latin America again. Um, el 2021 marca para nosotros uh, a nivel de contenido uh, una combinación uh, muy interesante, que es el uh, éxito rotundo de este género de misterio y de preguntas sin respuestas que se ha establecido como el gran atractivo de la pantalla de History para toda la región. Obviamente desde nuestra eh, icónica serie alienígenas ancestrales que hoy, después de casi 13 temporadas de los mismos productores, llega este fenómeno de inexplicable. Eh, inexplicable viene a cumplir eh, eh, una novedad en este género que, que significa tanto hoy para History y que al mismo tiempo eh, tenemos el orgullo de haber localizado este concepto y que en la misma noche vamos a tener el estreno de la temporada número 2 de Inexplicable con el señor William Shatner y inmediatamente a continuación el estreno de Inexplicable Latinoamérica con la conducción de John Lewis Amo. Para nosotros es un honor absoluto tener semejante nivel de talento, de, de, de celebrities y de personajes relevantes a nivel internacional en la pantalla, pero también sabemos por la larguísima trayectoria de los productores que el contenido que nutre esta serie es, es fascinante eh, desde el primer hasta el último episodio. Esperamos que lo disfruten enormemente. Yo sé que el gran atractivo de hoy eh, es eh, poder conversar en vivo con su anfitrión, William Shatner, así que no los voy a interrumpir más. Me encantaría que nos acompañen en los estrenos que esta semana, de vuelta en forma simultánea, eh, presentan Inexplicable eh, Inexplicable Latinoamérica. Los dejo de vuelta con César Sabroso para hablar con nuestro anfitrión. Gracias, Miguel. Y ahora vamos a compartir con ustedes un demo que resume la carrera impresionante de este ícono, que es el señor William Chatner. William Shatner comandó la tripulación del Enterprise a través del espacio y se convirtió en una leyenda. Carismático. All right, everybody. Lock and low. Seductor. I've heard a great deal about you. Oh, oh yeah. Cómico. You've been putting on a little weight. Y 
hasta cantante. Un completísimo artista cuyas memorables actuaciones en cine y televisión le valieron grandes reconocimientos de la industria del entretenimiento. William Shatner, William Shatner. Un símbolo de la cultura popular que trasciende generaciones y que con sus más de 70 años de carrera ha conseguido la admiración y el respeto de todo el mundo del espectáculo. Ahora en History Channel tenemos el honor de contar con su presencia estelar. Quiero encontrar la verdad de lo que hay del otro lado de las cosas. William Shatner ha logrado llevar a Inexplicable a lo más alto y hoy es una de las series preferidas por nuestra audiencia. Prepárate para descubrir más misterios. Celebramos con orgullo que este gran anfitrión, a sus 90 años, elige seguir haciendo historia junto a History Channel. Y haciendo historia tenemos ahora a William Chandler. Con ustedes, el señor William Chandler. Mission William Chandler. Explicable. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be with you. Good day. Buenos dias. Mr. William Shanner, we would like to know what attracts you the most about this particular project? Why you say yes to history and inexplicable? Everything is unexplained, is inexplicable. Uh, is unexplained. Inexplicable. In, 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 inexplicable. In unexplained in English uh, uh, is the title of the show in English. And I'm delighted that it's playing in Latin America. But to my mind, everything is unexplained. We don't know anything. I mean, you were uh, uh, emphasizing Stonehenge, for example. So we thought Stonehenge. Uh, people put up rocks and then we discovered that it was the solstice and they could tell when to plant and when to harvest and that seemed good and then it, we heard the sounds coming out of Stonehenge so the echo so maybe they prayed there and then we discovered there was stuff underground that there had been an original Stonehenge so that startled everybody and then we discovered that there were other Stonehenges all around that that whole area was devoted to something that long ago people uh, uh, went to the trouble of getting stones and putting them up and doing something, praying. Was it praying? Was, there, was it an open market? We don't know. It's unexplained. It is unexplained because science keeps advancing and we keep discovering new things. What, what are mummies? What did, why did they mummify? Uh, all these things. I know one of the shows that we're uh, showing you this uh, this season is about mummies. How did they discover mummification? Why did they mummify? There is a story that I heard about a monk that was mummified 5,000 years ago, and they've done a DNA study, and they've got, apparently, they've got the larynx produced and they ran air through the larynx and the mummy the 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 monk made a sound five thousand years later the vocal box gave out a sound i mean everything is inexplicable until they discovered plate tectonics we didn't know we, we thought we knew how the world worked we don't know how anything works what For example, is precognition. Does that mean there's something else out there? Is that proof of there's something out there or things have happened already? What? We don't know anything. So the inexplicable, the unexplained, is tantalizing us with a mystery, bringing us to uh, uh, the, 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 the grasp of the enormity of the mysteries we don't know. That's what brought in May 22nd. In. in May 22nd, we're going to be airing the Rich for 
advice. In Saturday the 29th, Mr. Smamis, on June 5th, we will watch Extraordinary Engineering, and then on Saturday the 12th, The Mystery of the Plagues. Which episode was the most impactful for you, or which one do you recommend that we have to watch no matter what of season two? You can't make that discrimination in these short number of shows that we're showing you. You need to see them all with the tantalizing mystery of everything. For example, Atlantis. So, yes, Atlantis, there was a group of people, and they made a city, and then it was uh, the floodwaters. Uh, but that doesn't begin to explain what Atlantis was. Was there this huge statue that stood at the gate of that port? Why was it invented? What was that? How did they build those incredible things without any of the engineering that we have, the machines, the knowledge? How did they do that? It's unexplained. The city of Atlantis has not been discovered, but the very idea that Atlantis exists is like mind-blowing. You've got to watch the show to understand that there have been many, many instances where human beings have built things, and we don't know how they built them, and we don't know why they built them. What is the urge to build these enormous buildings? What are we reaching for? Why don't we just stay and look up into the skies and wonder, why build these, these things that reach up into the sky and the higher it goes, the more profound it is? Why do they devote 200 years of an entire nation to, to building a cathedral? What is that? What, what, what is the impetus? Mysterious, unexplained, inexplicable. What you have learned from this series what did I learn? Yes. I learned that I thought I knew something. You know, hey, I'm an old man. I, I read a lot. I, I talk to people like yourself and learn a great deal. And I realize that I know nothing. There's the truth that encaptures all our life from childhood to old age. We think we're learning, we know nothing. And that in itself is both demoralizing and also it's an aspect of hope and, and the will to discover something more, which I think all this is about. Have you ever experienced something unexplainable in your real life? Why does my wife love me? I don't know. <laughs> the the um, yes, um, I I my life is filled with animals, dogs, horses. My concept of life is the unity of life. I'm looking out at a window. There's a tree. I know now that trees communicate. Fish communicate. Snails. I watched two snails shivering in 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 ecstasy. They were commun. They were mating, but they were communicating. Fish communicate. Octopus communicate. We know that 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 um, sludge uh, communicates. The very basis basic parts of nature communicate. Virus communicate in some manner. We're all united, yet how? That's the real inexplicable. Your passion for life is unmatchable. We want to know which are the key lessons that you learned from your long-lasting career in Hollywood. What you have? Well, well, just repeat that. Tell me the question again. We know that your passion for life has yes, no match. I'm good with that. You are yeah. amazing, truly amazing. What you have learned from your long, what are the key lessons from your long-lasting career in Hollywood? Oh, I, I see. 
Well, I'm not sure that you learn from a career. I, I suppose you do. I've talked to a lot of people uh, uh, of various knowledge, knowledge and various positions and, and various skills. I've, 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 I've done interview shows and learned a great deal. But I read a lot, and I'm, I'm fascinated, totally fascinated, day after day, my whole life, about the fascination of life. How does life begin? Is there life out there? How did life begin here? What is life? How do you make life? Can life be made? Can you do something in the laboratory and create life? Is life bacterial? What is life? What is intelligence? What? I'm, I'm consumed with the mystery of precognition. What does that indicate? What is a photon of light doing in a in a star in a in a, in a distant star 13 uh, in a distant galaxy 13.8 billion years out there and it makes its way to my retina in 13.8 billion years this little photon which may or may not be a particle or it may be a wave i don't even understand what that means we don't even know what a photon of light is it has no weight and yet it tells me it's 13.8 billion years old what does that say about where we are and what we don't know everything we look at is inexplicable is unexplained that's what i could do that's how i get through life and that's what i've learned whether it was in hollywood or in montreal where i was born or in my various trips to south america everything the great civilizations of central america that disappeared what happened what happened we don't know some of the of the uh, of these great civilizations that took place in in south america and 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 central america we know what happened but there are others longer older still mysterious we have no idea how did they lift those big stones without any of the engine we have engineers who say we can't lift those stones today and they were somehow uh brought into a, a building they made a building out of the great stone how did they do that these are the mysterious things that i have pondered all my life whether i was in hollywood or elsewhere which memories do you have from latin america that you would like to share with us today well um i was in argentina Argentina uh, some years ago and I I rode horses on the Pampas uh, I fished in various streams I uh, I was in the great cities and uh, learned to love the people uh, th that was uh, fantastic I I have been to uh, um, Mexico I've been to uh, the outskirts of Brazil. I have, I have been to Panama. I have only really discovered uh, a little bit of Argentina. I want to go to all those great places: to Peru, uh, to uh, to uh, Venezuela. To I want to go to all those great cities and countries that are on our southern border and discover the people of South America and Latin America are the friendliest, the most beautiful. Portuguese, I think, is the most beautiful language spoken, for example, the most fluid and liquid. Uh, I wonder what Shakespeare sounds like in Portuguese. Uh, I, I have the whole of, uh, of uh, the Latin America to discover. And also, talking about life, I was reading the news that you already experienced with artificial intelligence in story life and you already learned your voice so you can last forever. Tell us a little bit about it. I've joined a company called Storyfile. I'm part of the company now. And I spent five days being filmed by 18 cameras and speaking into a microphone 
that was uh, recording my voice and feeding it to artificial intelligence. The people behind the camera asked me question after question for five days, nine, ten hours a day. All that information was fed into artificial intelligence while I was being filmed as a three-dimensional being. That entity exists now, and they are they are uh, uh, pl uh, uh, playing. They're 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 fiddling with it. They're 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 manipulating it, and they have the technology which exists so that when it's ready, and you press a button and you ask this three-dimensional figure of me a question, the artificial intelligence will answer the question based on everything that I've fed it. So that is something that will exist as long as electronics, as long as a, uh, an electronic signal exists. So when I'm dead, think of the fantasy of on my gravestone. And by the way, I don't want a gravestone. I want to be a tree. And I've got a new album coming out in which I sing a song is, I want to be a tree because I want my body planted and a tree growing over my body so i'm still part of nature but imagine having a device that you press a button and ask me a question 50 years from now and this figure answers the question the way i would have asked this whole new technology that exists and how it works and the way it's going to work is totally Inexplic inexplicable to me. I, I, I can't explain how, how it works or what uses it will finally be put to use on. I have no idea. We have more than 235 journalists that are dying to talk to you in a couple of minutes. So my Don't last die. question to Don't you die. will be... Don't die. It will be, what is next for Mr. William Shatner? You have 90 years old. You have done almost everything in your lifetime. So what is next for you? Well, let me give you an idea of what's next for us. So I'm doing the unexplained, and we're in our third season in the United States. And the, the, the request for the number of hours is monumental. We have a huge number of our shows to uh, to film and to be ready and to send on to Latin America when you guys are ready. I have a talk show going uh, that I'm entitling I Don't Understand. And it's everything, as you can hear, that I don't understand, which is everything. So every subject is available to me. I don't understand, and just name it, I don't understand anything. So everything I will ask, everything I'm curious about, we'll find an expert, we'll find somebody who can really explain it. And explain to me some of these inexplicables. I have a new album coming out uh, in which it's, during the pandemic, I focused with a friend of mine who's a great poet and a musician, uh, a wonderful musician, and we made an album based on experiences of mine. I talked it over with the poet. We wrote it together. And then we sent it off to the musician. And there are very, uh, various other musicians who are going to put their tracks next to mine. And we have a wonderful album coming out this summer called uh, Love, Death, and Horses. Um, there are various businesses I'm acquainted with, one of which is um, the story file uh, that I'm doing. What else am I doing? I'm riding horses in a discipline called reining. I'm competing on a very high level. Uh, and I've gotten better as a result of having to be uh, alone and not uh, come into contact with anybody. I focused a great deal of my time at a stable where my horses are and practiced every day again and again how to be a better rainer which is a lot of cowboy moves sliding stops uh, the changing of leads uh, uh, turns spins uh, 
It's very athletic and you have to practice it a lot. And I was able to practice it a lot. And now I'm a better rainer, I'm a better rider than I was before the pandemic. And I'm looking forward to being able to, to challenge myself in these uh, horse shows that uh, I will uh, go to and compete. The charitable work that I'm involved with, the Hollywood Charity Horse Show, which wasn't able to go on because of the pandemic uh, last year and this year, will be on in 2022. The Hollywood Charity Horse Show is a total, is a total horse show, big horse show, which every penny that we can uh, gather, every penny goes to children and veterans. Uh, that's a huge, uh, uh, that's been going on for 30 years. So over 30 years, the amount of money I've been able to raise over 30 years is millions of dollars that are going to kids and to veterans, many of whom share the same problems. That's a beginning. You're an amazing actor, you're a comedian, and you also do drama, you're a TV host, you're a singer, a writer, uh, and you're, of course, a writer, and everything else that you want to do. So now we're going to give the chance for our international press to do a couple of questions so you can answer them quickly, so we can have a Q&A right now. So I'm going to ask I'm Mariana if it's okay with you. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. So, Mariana, we are so ready. Vamos. Hello, Paolo. Hi, Mr. Shatner. It's a, literally an honor and a fantastic pleasure to, to talk to you. You know, Thank you. I, 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 your career. I feel the same about you. <laughs> Thank you. I follow your career uh, since, oh, okay, Star Trek, I'm a tracker, okay, no problem with that. But uh, you have so many uh, sci-fi TV shows and sci-fi movies. But what do you feel doing this kind of TV show, this unexplained? Well, like I've, uh, like I've talked about, perhaps too much, about how the, the, the mystery of life, we're surrounded by mystery. What happens after death? I, and I'm getting close to dying. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> no, no. this old man. And I keep thinking about what's it going to be like? In fact, I talked to a guy who had a uh, who runs a um, a place where, where where you're dying and you go to what is it called and and, and they take care of the uh, uh, of, of the dying and help them die. And I said, well, I suppose when you die, the body takes care of yourself and and you go into shock and you don't. He said, no, dying is painful. I didn't want to hear that. So <laughs> the mystery of life. <laughs> The mystery of life uh, uh, is uh, what I'm what I'm involved with, and and uh, and, and uh, that's what I'm doing. It's following the mysteries. Thank you very much, and long live and prosper. You too, Mariana. Next question, please. Yes, we are going to continue with Monica Rubalcaba from FE Agency Mexico. Hi, I am so happy to talk with you, William. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm pleased as well. I would like to ask you, a year ago, this show, this show started in Latin America when the pandemic just arrived. And I would like to ask you, how do you see the world now? And if, the, if you think that there are some things that should stay unexplicable. Well, the world... I think what we need to do is learn from this pandemic. We're getting a handle on it in various at different rates in different countries. But we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And the inoculation will be the, the key to, to stopping all the deaths. But we have to realize this is just preliminary. Pandemics will be endemic and we will be facing what we're looking at now many more times and far worse but the worst thing that's about to happen is global warming and it's not so much that i mean we're in global warming 
but it's how far it will go. How far will the seas rise? What cities will be put underwater before they have damming the way they do in Hull? Where will these severe storms hit and what damage will they do? How many people will die as a result of global warming? And what are we going to do about it instead of putting our heads in the sand? We talk about it being unexplained. There's no unexplained, is not inexplicable about what global warming is. We know exactly what global warming is. We have to do something about it. Thank you, Thank William. You. Next question, Mariana. Yes, from Colombia, Esteban Cruz from Colombia. Claro. Hello, William from Colombia. For me, it is an honor to be here. Thank you. Um, I would like you to tell me what, what do you think about the mummies? Uh, one chapter in the season two is about mummies. Which was the most surprising for you? Well, the Egyptians had that science down. They knew uh, how to mummify. And their whole religion was that they were uh, preserving the body so they would have an afterlife. And then they put in the mummies that we can... Uh, that we can uh, get a hold of by being in a pyramid or or some place where they, they, they haven't been moved, we can get to them and see that they place treasures uh, that the individual had during their life along with them, so they would have those treasures uh, to to go to go with them. Then we discovered that the Chinese were doing the same thing, and those wonderful uh, Chinese uh, statue armies accompanied. <laughs> the emperors, and this whole afterlife that people always, that's the inexplicable, what is in the afterlife, and this mummification was a desire to preserve the life of that person so they would go on to the afterlife. Well, you know, maybe the body wasn't meant to be preserved, and maybe there's a soul, and did they understand what a soul was? And is there a soul? And can you measure a soul? I mean, that's the inexplicable of mummification. What were they thinking? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you from Colombia. Next question, Mariana. Here yeah, from Tomás Almaceda, La Nación newspaper, Argentina. Hi, Mr. Sardner. I want to know, Star Trek always have an optimistic view of the future and of uh, aliens. I want to know if you share that optimistic view, if aliens uh, exist. And I want to know if you think that governments, US governments and other governments hide uh, information about uh, alien life. Well, your first question, uh, part of your question is an optimistic point of view by Star Trek. And that's what I think the why Star Trek has existed so long. It presents life three, four hundred years from now, and everything is terrific, and, and people are alive and, and doing well. That's a question. As we all know, the existence of human life on Earth is a real question now. And as I said before, it's up to us now, this instant, the moment this, <laughs> this interview is over, to go do something about it. And, and we're slowly coming to that point of view, but let's hope it's not too slowly. As for uh, the second part of your question, uh, to, uh, what was that again? Uh, just repeat that. That if the you think part. that the government hide information uh, about alien right. life. Information. Well, I, I, no, I don't think so. I think the heads of the government are just you know, flawed human beings like we all are, and they get elected for one reason or another, or they, to begin with, they run for office for one reason or another. And I, have, I, I would think the humanity involved in government would make somebody say, oh, I've got a secret that they don't allow out and, and expose the secret. Nobody's ever done that. The closest thing that we're... we're seeing now are those films that the world has seen from Navy pilots and that's inexplicable. 
but I think there's an explanation for it. And I would love to think that there's flying vehicles around and it isn't just electronic or something, uh, 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 something uh, uh, out there that isn't from outer space. But I, on this album that I was talking about, uh, I wrote a song called Fata Morgana. And Fata Morgana is a illusion that you that you you might see in the desert where you see a you see water uh, or a fertile area what's happening is the the light bounces off the heat waves and it's the levels of heat and cold that offer a reflection and you're seeing a reflection that might very well be thousands of miles away so we see that those those images uh, that we recently about ships that don't exist and flying objects and that may be explained by Fata Morgana. What these things are that the Navy is seeing, I don't know. And what they're going to reveal as apparently they're going to reveal, I don't know. I hesitate to think that they're UFOs that haven't made themselves uh, available to us long before this. So it's inexplicable uh, for the moment, but I think uh, we will get the, an explanation very soon. Inexplicable indeed. Now, Mariana, next question. Yes, from Mexico. Araceli Garcia, El Universal newspaper. Hi, William. Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi. Um, my Pleasure is mine. Is um, also about the like the coronavirus. Uh, last year was uh, an example uh, that unexplained things can happen. So, in your opinion, after this pandemic year, how the society has changed, and also how you changed uh, after this year? You mean uh, 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 in in total or? my uh, idea of what the ufos are no he, she's referring to the you. life before and after the pandemia due to the COVID. Oh, I see. Okay. what have changed the world and yourself what have changed due to the pandemia because i was uh, as we all were forced to uh, uh be alone to, to uh, quarantine myself with my wife and and then uh, didn't see my children, but did it on Zoom. I was forced to go within. And I've discovered that, and I a lot of people have felt this from what I've seen and read. I've gone more into myself and seen what is more important. I have been running around and going on tour and, and, and doing shows and, and making appearances and working on various things. And, and I've gone within myself more this year. And I see the beauty of that, uh, the leisure of that. I am trying to I guess the word is mindful more and more so that I'm mindful of the pleasure I'm having speaking to you and at the same time being aware of the miracle of Zoom and uh, wondering whether I can get a cold drink after this is over. I mean, the sensuality of aware of your body as well as the philosophical external part of your existence so that it all comes together and you're mindful of everything that's the that's the object of many religions uh zen for example and i've tried to do that all my life to be part of like riding a horse i i'm able now to make the to feel the horse and i being one or in talking to people and doing a great interview, uh, either me doing the interviewing or being interviewed, of having a feeling of connection. 
I've had that many times with an audience. When I've performed in front of an audience, to have that feeling of connection. So I've discovered that more and more here uh, during this past year. <coughs> Next question, Mariana. Thank you, William. Yes, it's from Colombia. Ushi Levan <coughs> from La FM. Mr. Shatner, welcome to Colombia. Welcome to La FM. It is an honor Thank having you. you with us. Uh, the Thank unexplained you. is how well you look. Holy moly, I need your secret right now. <laughs> you look amazing. Thank um, you. I would like to know what that, advice... That's, uh, that's, that's inexplicable. Inex inexplicable. Inexplicable, impresionante. What advice would you give your 25-year-old <laughs> self And what advice <laughs> would you give Captain Kirk? What advice would, the, uh, would I give the 25-year-old? And what advice would I give Captain Kirk? Your 25-year-old self. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you what? want us to take a break so you can take water first? No, no, no. I want to die on, okay. on screen. It'd be a marvelous, dramatic Whoa, moment that would be Whoa, that would be awesome but for me. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he go? He died. That's unexplained. Um, of course. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute. No problem. <laughs> no. Um, I tell you, I've got an 18-year-old granddaughter who is just exploding with freedom. She wants to go everywhere. She went to, uh, during this time, she went to Rome to learn to speak Italian and have the, had these wonderful adventures. I... When I was 19, uh, 18, 19, I uh, thumbed all across the United States. I started in Montreal, just prior to going to university, and I, I, I hitchhiked four or 5,000 miles in the United States, all the way down to the southern border, up to north of Vancouver, back to Montreal. I had this adventure, and I've never forgotten it, and it was part of the freedom of being young. So for an old man to give advice to a young man or my young granddaughter to say, hey, hold on, don't go there because you know something could happen. I think that's the wrong advice. Let something happen, find out, try your wings, go as high to the sun as you can. Forget about the, the feathers melting, the wax, the, 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 the wax melting, forget about that. Go and have an adventure because life is over so quickly. I'm here to tell you there's nothing inexplicable about, about the, the shortness of life. You live, you're born and you die, and before you know it, you're at the end of your journey. So make that journey, I would have said to my 25-year-old, as I am saying to my 18-year-old grandchild, make that journey as filled with color and adventure and fun as much as you can because don't let some old guy tell you what to do. And what advice would you give Captain Kirk? Um, Captain Kirk, stop kissing the girl so much. There's germs <laughs> out there. You <laughs> Thank you so much for being on LFM. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Thank you, Ushi. Thank Now you, William. Mariana. Of, uh, and, yes, Andres Ulani from UOL Noticias Brazil. Hi, Mr. Shatner. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I'm Thank really you. happy to be here. Uh, I want to know too. is there uh, any particular story in season two that maybe scared you or shocked you? Yeah, I mean, so many of them. You know, the biggest mystery of all, well, maybe not the biggest mystery, but a giant mystery is the human mind. Our brain, how did that happen? We don't quite know what happened from the lizard to this thing we have. We don't understand what happened. And we don't understand the way 
all of it works. What is memory? How does that, where, do, where, where does the memory thing go? And what are our impressions? And what is um, uh, anticipating the future? And what is the feeling? And what, there's, the brain is a huge mystery. So how to del delve into that? You know, I've almost forgotten your question. I get so caught up in the mystery of the brain what was your question? Tell me, what what did you want me to address? Yeah, I asked you if there, if there is any particular uh, story on, in season two that scared so, you or shocked you. So the whole idea of, of the brain and what we imagine and what we think is happening and is real and that isn't real because something there we we deal with on the uh, inex uh, we deal with things like uh, the Mothman or visions like 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 werewolves and uh, and uh, the, 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 the mysterious beings walking in forest. Do they exist, or is it inside our head? Have we made an illusion? What is an illusion? So what frightens me is the illusions, is the, the, the non-reality that we think is real. And that goes for people and experiences and our own psyche. We think things are real and many times they're not real. And many times they're real and we refuse to accept it as reality. Thank you, William. Now, next question, Mariana. Yes, yeah, from Roque Casiero from Pagina 12, Argentina. Hi, uh, hi Mr. Shatner. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor, of course. Uh, and I, I, I would like to, to know if, uh, after being exposed to so many unexplained aspects of the universe, if you still consider a show like Star Trek a science fiction. That's a great question. <clears throat> the, the universe, as far as we know it, and everything I've said up to now gives you reason to doubt that we know anything. So we think because of this red uh, uh, shift that we see this galaxy 13.8 billion years out there and we think, okay, the, 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 the universe is 13.8 billion years. But what we don't understand, and as, and as I'm sure all of you know, the universe is expanding. Where's it going? Where is it going? Is it, it's going into nothing or is it colliding with another universe? We see galaxies colliding. Why couldn't universes collide? Is there another universe out there that's 13 point? What is time? So, I, 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 I just don't know anything. And, uh, and, and that's, um, that's the science fiction part of it all. We, we, we make we, we make up things and they may or may not be real. And if you're asking me about science fiction, everything we can imagine is real. We're incapable of imagining something that doesn't exist or it isn't real because we don't we don't have any uh, any uh, uh, foundation to imagine something we can't imagine. So everything that's in science fiction is possible. And yet, it's unexplained. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, William. You. Thank you, Colombia. Next question, Mariana. We have three more to go. Yes, Carolina Cerda from Publimetro, Chile. Buenos dias. <laughs> Buenos dias. Hi, William. And this is great. I, I have to say, I love Denny Crane. Uh, I love him. I love you for that. So, so, so did I. 
<laughs> so, so the thing is, I wanted to know, uh, but now I'm not sure because you've, you've said so many things already that I want to know what is the most interesting thing you've learned from the show. I know now from hearing you talk that it might be a bit difficult for you to pick just one thing, but please try. All right. Well, let me let me give you an instance. Okay. We don't quite understand <laughs> how voodoo works. Oh yeah, it's psychological, and they think and they go, but but somehow a distance away. You can take a talisman, put a needle through the talisman, and something happens to that, that uh, object that's being pierced, the real, the real object that is pierced, and people have died. So what, what, is, what is that? Is it a religion? People have been cured by being religious, but we think maybe they weren't sick to begin with. Or is it the mind-body uh, connection? But then how did those people know about the mind? I mean, the, the rings of mystery. So it starts with a pin through a, 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 a doll, and it amplifies into holy or as the lady said before holy moly what is all that and and so every one of these things every one of these shows says oh well this is mysterious and you think yeah well that's mysterious but if you see the ramifications of that mystery then you're dazzled and you have to know more and you have to see the show more because we apply ourselves to a lot of mysterious things, which has horizons. So you just don't look at uh, the mummies or the buildings, uh, uh, to name two shows that you're going to be seeing. You got to see beyond that, beyond what is being shown to you is a, is a, a larger mystery that we don't have time to apply ourselves to. Otherwise, we would say, and this brings you to this and this brings you to that, but imagine this imagination. Mariana, next question. Yes, from Colombia, Daniela Suarez from El Espectador newspaper. William, it's such an honor to have you here with us. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I want you to know, um, has this show changed the way that you see uh, the world? And what's your favorite uh, story from the show? Well, it this show has amplified, and the reason I, 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 I did I'm doing the show, as I was asked earlier on. The reason I'm doing the show is I think that this mysterioso of life is is dramatic. It's tantalizing. It's it leads you on. So. I, 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 it, it, it's like being joined by a, an, another seven musicians. You're playing your instrument and, and suddenly a whole quartet and then a symphony orchestra joins you in the songs of mystery. Woo! And, and suddenly you're assailed by, uh, by all the, the questions that human beings have been asking from the beginning of time. When primitive man first killed his, the, the first dinosaur and saw this little tiny brain and wondered what was that and what are we got and then, and then saw the, the intelligence of the predators and, and, and so are they thinking and are they banding together and if they use tools and are we using the whole mystery of what I've been referring to all, all afternoon, that's what this show is 
taught me. And one of the biggest mysteries, everything, everything's a mystery. I can find a mystery in, in um, what a, another one of the subjects, one of the four subjects, was we did the buildings and we did, uh, 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 help me with another subject matter, guys. What, Atlantis, what other show are we? the mummies what? and the plaque. The, I did the mummies, I did Atlantis, I did what else? The mummies, and then with the only one left is about the pandemics. Uh, uh, yes, uh, pandemics and and uh, and the uh, the way pandemics and what are pandemics and how do those viruses? My understanding is that a virus is somewhere between dead and alive, between uh, being animate and inanimate, and. But it seems to learn by the process of, well, they, they're discovering the process. So what is a virus? What is, the, what, how did a virus begin? How did a virus come to lock onto our cells or the, the host cells? How did it learn to do it? Where did it come from? We're in the voyage of discovering all that. But viruses themselves are mysterious. And they're the origins of these pandemics. And what will happen to viruses as they become smarter and smarter as they are? They elude us. We, we, we come up with a solution and they say, ah, a solution. And they go around us. And they're continually having a different strategy of which we have to find out the strategy. So we're now looking for a different strategy. How mysterious is viral work? For, for us human beings. It's filled with mystery. Where are they going? What are they doing? How do they exist? Pandemics. Another subject that we're touching is anything? also the, the, yes, the Bermuda Triangle and the secret life of Jesus. There are other subjects that we're touching. The Bermuda Mariana, Triangle. next question, please. Yes. Yes. Bermuda yeah, Triangle, yes. Yes, it will be the last one from Brazil, Marianne Morizawa of Estado Ma Mariana, de Pablo. Mariana, Mariana, wait one second. William was about to say yes. something about the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, sorry, well. sorry. Oh, the Bermuda Triangle. Well, the Bermuda Triangle is a mysterious confluence of currents uh, in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. And I, I somehow picked up a book about eels. And I was reading about eels. And for the, for for... The, since the beginning of time, and Socrates apparently wrote about it, uh, about where do eels go when they mate? Nobody knows. So this writer followed eels. For the first time in history, we've discovered the eels somehow, mysterioso, get a call, and they swim down the rivers and the place, and they end up in the Bermuda Triangle, in the Saragossa Sea. And somewhere in the Saragossa Sea, in the Bermuda Triangle, they mate. And somehow they find their way back. And there's this mysterious gyre of currents, both uh, water and air, that have caused all kinds of distress, some of it very mysterious. Now, if eels can have eluded us, since the beginning of time until now, what else is eluding us in that very mysterious part of the Atlantic Ocean? Thank you. Mariana, now we are ready for Marianne. Yes, Marianne Morizawa from Ostado de Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hi, William. William uh, thanks for taking the time. I wanted to ask you, uh, what uh, terrifies you? Uh, I mean, a lot of people are scared of, uh, you know, ghosts or uh, supernatural things. Others are more scared of thieves or something like that. What scares you? Well, the, the biggest thing that scares me is death. I would love to see spirits and ghosts. I, 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 I've, I've spent my life looking for a ghost. Like, please, you know, why doesn't the people I loved who are now dead, why don't they come and visit with me? Um, uh, Houdini 
the great magician and uh, he said to his wife i'm dying but if i can come back to you i will come back to you and i will say the word believe and so she went to seance after seance she waited all her life for her beloved houdini to come back and whisper the words believe and then she would know that was a key word that was the that was the word and she waited and waited and died and never heard believe. I would love somebody to come back. I don't understand how these people who say, oh, um, your grandfather is right over there and, and he's saying thank you for the, 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 the cold drink you gave him on a hot summer. What are they talking about? Why would grandpa say that? Well, why wouldn't grandpa who's been dead a hundred years not say, Bill? It's great up here. Don't be afraid to die. Never heard that one. So fear of death. But I also did a shark week, uh, which will be on soon. Uh, and, and I watched 18-foot tiger sharks, four of them, swimming around. I was in feet of them. And... And, and they were swimming around and they were being fed, but they were trying to eat us. And, and the people in, in the Bahamas who knew how to do it would shove them away. Golly. And then in 60 feet of water, the shark whisperer put a five foot shark in my lap and I petted a five foot shark. I felt Everybody's wearing chain mail. I didn't have, they didn't give me chain mail. And I'm petting, but because I didn't have chain mail, I could feel the skin. I could feel this. It's not rough. It feels like tough velvet. And I'm petting the shark. And I'm, I, and you know, what could be more terrifying than a, 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 a man eater? And they hate that term, by the way, because sharks don't eat men. The, 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 the very few and far between. But put it this way, a dangerous animal who doesn't know anything about uh, stop, uh, uh, I, uh, I was in three or four feet of them, and that was fearful. I'm afraid of a great many things, but uh, I had a tiger on a leash once i it was a chain and we were doing a scene and they i had to walk this tiger and i had seen footage of a, a bear that turned on the on the trainer and i'd seen footage of a lion turning on the train biting his leg and they were trying to pull him off and i've got a tiger on a chain 600 pound tiger I went, I was in a canoe, I was in a kayak, learning to kayak, and I was on film, and they were teaching me to kayak, and, I, and every day they would put me in a, 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 a more uh, a dangerous um, uh, uh, water flow, uh, rapids, and, and you had to, uh, in the kayak, you have to Eskimo roll, so the, 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 the kayak turns very quickly, before you can even blink your eye. So you have to be so alert. And now suddenly you're underwater. And then you have to do an Eskimo roll and get above water. And I was flung in this torrent underwater. And I, and I couldn't get the Indian roll. And I had to take the, 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 the rubber band off the apron and get out of the, out of the, out of the before I drowned. I was, and then I looked up and I could see the kayak floating at the same rate that I was floating. I've been okay. Now the last question comes from Chile. Mariana, let's go. Juan Andres Alfate from La Red TV, Chile. Hi, William. Nice to meet you at last. My cup time. About time, too, I may say. Oh, look at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you much. Okay. What do you think about this? Do you believe there's a limit for science on trying to explain everything? I mean, there are mysteries like the human consciousness or life after death. They seem to stay 
without explanation forever. Maybe that's, that's the way it should be. So are we living in the matrix or something? Well, I, I understand. And, and there are religions who say that's enough. You know, uh, there's no explanation. And yet, and yet, that mystery that we are, that human beings are, this, these mysterious urges to keep going and to explore both physically and mentally and, and to keep trying to answer these questions. And so we come upon new theories like the Big Bang and tectonic plates and, and, and antiseptic and, 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 uh, and uh, 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 inoculation and, and, and all these things that puzzled mankind and suddenly science is explaining it. Can science explain the inexplicable or not? That may be the biggest mystery of all. I'd like to see them try. Thank you so much, Chile. Okay, thank you. And now, William, we really want to say that every time that we have a chance to talk, we are always waiting to promote a TV show. We want to promote a new season in, in history, in this case, with a new season of Inexplicable. But we always, always getting the best man out there to give us his passion for life, his key lessons of life, giving us the best wise advice and always teaching us something new and how to love life and how to always dream for something better for tomorrow. Thank you so much, William, for everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to answer some of these questions and, and to share my passion uh, for my show, uh, The Unexplained, uh, with everybody there. Thank you so much. Thank you, William. We really appreciate everything. And gracias a todos. Muy obrigado para todo el mundo. Gracias a todos. Y esperamos verlos en una próxima edición. La próxima semana tenemos American Pickers. Así que un gran aplauso para Mr. William Shatner. Thank you so much. Gracias. Muy obrigado. Muchas gracias. Thank you, everybody. And now, Let's remind everybody that we're waiting next week on the 26th, el 26, con American Pickers en History Channel otra vez. Gracias a todos, excelente día. Gracias por todo, muchas gracias, hasta luego. Voy a llevarte de viaje. Bye -bye. Un viaje que transformará tu mundo de pies a cabeza. Es un viaje que echará luz sobre lo extraño, lo desconocido y lo inexplicable. Conmigo, William Shatner. Podría ser un hecho real o pura ficción. Un encubrimiento o una mentira. Algo natural o sobrenatural. Solo un hombre puede distinguirlo. Inexplicable conmigo, William Shatner, por History Channel. Prepárate para descubrir... Más misterios. Existen misterios en Latinoamérica que desafían a la razón. Preguntas sobre la vida jamás respondidas. Eventos fascinantes que ocurrieron en nuestra tierra. Aunque no lo creas, esta vez ocurre aquí. Inexplicable Latinoamérica. Solo por History Channel.